Hello YouTube, just a very quick thank you for my first 100 subscribers. Um, I've managed to rename my uh, YouTube account now to Mr. Leica, so it matches the blog. Um, this is an unplanned, um, fun YouTube video, just because I said at the moment my YouTube videos probably look very non-creative, but I remember years ago when the DSLR cameras first came out that I bought a camera to try to shoot some video with and I'd saved them to a different an old YouTube account that I used to use. Um, this evening I've gone on and had a look and I found um, maybe 10 videos from 2012 of me shooting with a Nikon D90 uh, with very very pixely kind of images and I've shot some short videos and um, it sounds like I'm giving myself a pat on the back, but I'm really kind of impressed at how creative they are, and I've no idea how I managed to edit them because I'm I'm totally rubbish at editing videos. Um, I remember buying the Nikon D800 on pre-order, in I think that was May 2012, primarily to shoot video, and then at the time I was part of a Indian wedding um, cinema photography team. So I was like the the kind of fast lens kind of creative clip guy. So I had a proper like um, slider and everything. And um, I used to shoot the 10 to 15 second clips, cinema photography style of, during the weddings of kind of jewelry and the um, ceremonies and things like that. And then give all the footage to the guys who were really good at editing. And then they merge that with drone footage. No, not drone, there's no drones in. Um, <clears throat> gimbal footage and steady cams and, th and cranes and we put it all together to make like a really high-end looking um, Asian wedding video package um, so shout out to Manny and I don't think the guy he's called Manny basically who found me um, and got me into video in the first place that was 2012 um, I soon realised that editing video takes a long time and so my Nikon D800 plan to take over the world by shooting videos kind of died a bit of a death and then I moved on to Leica which I see are not video cameras and then I started shooting um, analog film and after that there's no more no more kind of moving film photos but when I found these uh, these ones from 2012 I was kind of quite impressed that how creative I could be. Um, so what I'll do, I'll link these, I'll link some onto the, to underneath, to, below, and it may give you some idea of what I might be capable of in terms of making this channel a bit more interesting going forward. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited. <laughs> um, after quick, quick confession, after saying at the very, in my first videos, I'm not going to be kind of one of these YouTubers that the special effects and things like this. I'm going to keep it really simple and no frills. At the same time, I don't like to do things half-hearted. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to try and do it kind of 110% and give it like my everything. So um, at the weekend, I accidentally bought myself a, um, a vlogging camera. Um, at the moment, I'm shooting on a my old D800, which is great, but there's no screen, so. I'm probably not even in focus because it's a manual focus lens. Um, I'm shooting on my old 24mm 1.4 um, Samyang, also known as a Rockinon. I used to use this on my slider, it used to be amazing for weddings. Slightly soft, wide open, but off topic. So I've got my D800 with no s screen, so I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just hoping I'm in the shot. My head's probably chopped off and I'm probably blown out on this side and things like that. Then my other camera that I've got is my GoPro cheap version, the uh, E 4K, which is what I was using in Budapest. And those are my only two cameras, so I thought if I'm going to do it, let's let's do it and give it a give it a good shot. So I've ordered a camera specifically for blogging, and I'll um, I'll do test test run and all that jazz at a later date for that. And um, yeah, just seeing these old videos kind of inspired me to what I might be able to do going forward. 
Um, so yeah, very excited. Um, I'll link them below as I say, but don't expect too much because they're so pixely and kind of probably cheesy to be fair. But at the same time, I quite like the trippy look that they've got and videos are so much better with music. Um, back then in 2012, I think you could just use any music, but um, obviously not, these days you can't use the music I was using on the videos back then. But it certainly makes a huge difference rather than just a silent background. So I need to find a good editing software for Windows because the one I'm using is just awful. So apology for my schoolboy start editing in the last few videos. I just can't Windows Movie Maker won't work on my PC. It comes up with an error when I try to export it. And so I've got some crappy VSDC, something like this, V something, and it's just so horrible to use. Um, I tried to download Adobe Premiere and got an error with that as well. So I am trying. So I just need some decent software and <clears throat> I'll, um, we'll get things moving. Um, and just for the crack, um, for the kind of fun of it, just to make it more fun for myself, I thought it would be quite fun, quite uh, interesting to like this um, talking head style footage um, with unusual lighting. So although I'm sitting in my studio with a room full of um, photography high power studio lights, I've lit the whole, I've lit the set completely with my bike, LED bike lights. So I've got one LED bike light here. I've got a very small LED bike light on this side. It's more of a fill. And then I've got an LED, another bike light is a rim light um, across this ear. So yeah, I thought, show you what is possible with like the cheapest materials. Um, and just any, basically any light source. Um, I really like lights, so one of the things, rather than always talking about just film cameras and maybe Leicas, I can start talking about things that would be helpful to everybody, such as how to light yourself up in a DIY style studio to make some YouTube videos super cheap with unusual lighting or lighting you wouldn't necessarily think of as lighting for um, lighting yourself. Um, I'll take a photo of the lights after on a pile in the floor just to show you what, what I've done. But um, yeah, thought challenge for myself. It took a Took quite a while back and forward trying to get the exposure right because I've got a shiny forehead, but um, yeah, it'd be a lot easier when I've got a proper camera. So, um, just yeah, just really a thank you for the 100 subscribers, and I'm um, super excited to uh, get going forward. And if you want to see some really cheesy videos shot on about a two pixel Nikon D90, I'll link a few below. Feel free to only watch five seconds and move on, but the music's probably better than the actual videos. Um, I thought they were, I really enjoyed them. I've watched them all, and that's just me being uh, weird. But yeah, that's enough rambling. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Hello again. I thought it'd be quick to just show you um, how I've made these lights. So I'll just back up quickly so you can't really see, but below here was where I was sitting. And then what I've done, I've just, I don't mind budging things. So I've pinned a umbrella inside a bigger light. And if I take that off, there's the bike light. Just the bike light number one. This is my design. Is it? Number one. Light number two is so dark you can't even see it. What I'll do, I'll bring it to the light. Okay. Light number two is a fill. It's a tiny, tiny. That's my fill light. Okay, so that's number two. And number three, I guess another similar light as the one I was using in the umbrella. Take it off and show you. That's my light number three. It's a lower power version of this one. 
one the good thing about being a cyclist you also have lots of lights so now if I turn this around the end of the light you can see in the background is a plug-in wall light like a low energy wall light and um, that's it that's how I lit myself so yeah hopefully that will inspire a few people thanks bye